It has been a long time. Too long, in fact. We were certainly overdue. We're beginning the year in style by going to... However, we're not gonna make it to Key West until the next episode. Today we're staying about 30 miles short of the finish line, at Bahia Honda State Park. Ooh, wait till you see this place. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Yeah. Well, today we're going back to the Florida Keys. May the adventure begin. State Route 836 is called the Dolphin Expressway. And now we're turning onto State Route 826 more commonly known as the Palmetto Expressway. It is said that Miami is the only place where the words palmetto and dolphin might be a source of stress. But today we timed it right. I must say, on a Sunday mid-morning, this is not bad. Not bad at all. After an uneventful drive on the turnpike, we merge onto US-1 at Florida City, the southernmost municipality in the greater South Florida megalopolis. Miami, of course, is a unique city on its own right and my hometown, and we'll explore it in a future video very soon here. But for now, let's get down to the Florida Keys. I think the turquoise concrete barrier here needs a fresh coat of paint, but I digress. Here we are, entering Monroe County, which means we've left the mainland and we are now hopping from key to key on the overseas highway. This being my backyard, I've taken this road many times, so it is always fun to compare, you know, see what's changed, what has stayed the same. Gilbert's Resort and Tiki Bar down there seem to be about the same. The place where I used to sing, however, has changed a bit, but then again, it's been over 20 years. Anyway, after this high bridge, we are arriving at the first of the major keys, and this is a long one, so they decided to call it Key Largo. Self-proclaimed dive capital of the world. There's a relatively new luxury motorhome resort here on the right that maybe one of these days we'll check it out. It is followed by a bunch of cool bars and restaurants like the Caribbean Club featured in the movie Key Largo with Humphrey Bogart. It is kind of a dive bar, but a good one. Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill, which is actually in a resort. And my favorite, Sundowners. Great place to enjoy a sunset, having some seafood, perhaps an adult beverage. This kind of is the northernmost populated key, and even though you can still feel a little bit of influence from the mainland, we are definitely already on island time. The thing with Key Largo, however, is that in order to see its true beauty, you have to get away from US-1 and explore its narrow side streets, marinas and canals, and that is hard to do with a trailer in tow. Crossing Tavernier Creek Waterway, we are now on Isla Morada, the next major municipality along the overseas highway. And check out all the weekender traffic returning to the mainland on a Sunday. Up until now, we haven't been able to find any good RV resorts in Isla Morada proper, but there's some construction going on. I believe this is going to be the new Sun Outdoors resort, but I'm not sure. If it is, it is going to be huge! You may have noticed that up until now the overseas highway has not been particularly scenic or overseas for that matter, but that's about to change. The farther south we go, the more scenic it gets, in my opinion anyway. One of these days we'll do a more in-depth exploration of Isla Morada, we may go back to the theater of the sea or the Holiday Isle Tiki Bar, which served as inspiration for the Beach Boys hit Kokomo. It got blown off by Hurricane Irma, but they reconstructed it, even though it will never be the same. The all-you-can-eat seafood buffet. We are now crossing the 25-degree north parallel, and they have a store to prove it. Isla Morada Beer Company here on the left, which I have never actually visited. 
By the way, the name Isla Morada derives from the Spanish Isla Morada, which means Purple Island. Coming up is the bridge where I recorded my intro. It was very convenient because it had pull-through parking before and after, but not anymore. The day use areas have been blocked off for a couple of years now, so we're gonna have to find another bridge. There are so many places along this island chain of which I have fond memories that I could go on forever and we would never make it to our destination. There's the infamous Fiesta Key. Actually, I might give him a second chance one of these days. And we are now in Marathon. Marathon is probably the most developed municipality in the Middle Keys. They even have an airport. And several attractions, like a total hospital, a dolphin research center, none of which I have actually visited, and several good restaurants. At the western tip of the island, we encountered the famous Seven Mile Bridge. We'll be back in a couple of days because I want to ride the e-bike on the old bridge. It recently reopened after several years undergoing renovations. On the right, Pigeon Key. Originally a work camp for the construction of the overseas highway predecessor, the Overseas Railway. And that is Fred the Tree, growing on the old Seven Mile Bridge. The Florida Keys are not necessarily the most RV-friendly place unless you stay at one of the many expensive campgrounds like Sunshine Key here, or one of four state parks. Boondocking is strictly prohibited, so those are your only options. And the state parks? The one we're going to in particular is nearly impossible to book, especially if you want to get one of those coveted waterfront sites. Well, I use this website called CampNab. They reached out a couple of months ago and asked me if I wanted to try it and if it worked out for me to share it with you. It works with any campground that is on Reserve America or Recreation.gov. And the way it works, you select where you want to stay, when you want to stay, and you can even select which specific campsites you want to stay at. And Camp Nab checks periodically and sends you an email or a text or both when one of these campsites is about to become available. Brilliant! They have several pricing plans available depending on how many campsites you want to search for. And let me tell you, to me, being able to stay at a waterfront site in Bahia Honda State Park is almost priceless. I selected all the waterfront sites and Site 17 here was the first one to become available. I'm going to drop an affiliate link in the video description so you can check it out for yourself. Well, yeah, this was certainly bucket list. Oh, will you take a look at this place? Well, we finally landed one of these uh, waterfront sites here at Bahia Honda State Park. We're starving, we're gonna, we're gonna do some grilling and then uh, enjoy this, this, uh, I mean, you look at this place, that's, that's the old Bahia Honda Bridge. And uh, we have like our own private, you know, little beach here. Dock, dock, if you will. This is gonna be awesome. Anyway, let's, let's get the, the grill going. Smell of vision, baby. Smell of vision. Cheers. Almost ready. And that's lunch with a view. Let's go for a swim. Well, let's do it. Naturally, it is late November, so the water is a little cold, at least by Florida standards, but it's not bad, not bad at all, actually. And we're gonna get such a great sunset on that side. <sighs> it's awesome. It's awesome. And that's Ely taking pictures of me, embarrassing pictures. so cool to be able to snorkel right behind our campsite.
Hello there. Yep, it doesn't get much better than this, now does it? Came by the marina, they have two boat ramps and that looks like a boat tour of some kind. We'll figure it out at some point. Right now we just wanted to explore the park by foot. And we may not go all the way to the end of the bridge, the broken bridge today, but we might do it tomorrow. We'll see. This would be Calusa Beach, the main one on the bay side of the park. There are several other beaches on the ocean side. Oh yeah, today we're just getting the lay of the land or the water as well. <laughs> And uh, tomorrow we'll continue exploring here a little bit. I think we're gonna go back to our campsite and just enjoy the, enjoy some sun, sundowners, like they say. And tomorrow we'll, we'll do the bridge trail and maybe we'll even rent a watercraft. Why not? We'll see. These people just closed, uh, you know, the, the concession just closed a few minutes ago. So cool. But they have all kinds of things. How about some breakfast before another fun day in and out of the water? We'll keep it simple and traditional. Bacon and eggs. Some frozen veggies, salt, pepper, paprika. And the eggs, of course. Some Swiss cheese for good measure and we'll call it breakfast. Let's go for an e-bike ride around Bahia Honda State Park. First, we're gonna go to Calusa Beach on the bay side of the quay and then we'll come back to this day use area. And finally, to the recently reopened Sandspur Beach. As I mentioned, this is Calusa Beach, probably the most scenic one because of the old uh, decaying railway bridge. We've been to this one before. Let's continue. Here's that other day use area. There's even a class C, awning deployed and all. We are now on the ocean side. Let's go all the way to Sandspur Beach.
Oh, check it out! There's another campground here. Here we don't really have a view of the bridge or the amazing sunsets. Well, maybe you do. And it is probably quieter. I mean, we're probably closer to US-1 here, but at least uh, there's some vegetation in between. Let's explore more. We've got a lot of rocks, but still, it is waterfront. And once you get past the rocks, there's probably sand. I see some people swimming, so that's probably the better beach over there. Let's continue exploring. This is the Sands Per Day Use Area. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this might be, if not the nicest, one of the nicest beaches in the whole Florida Keys, at least from the, lo at least from the looks of it, you know. Definitely com coming back here later for a chapuzón. All right, let's go back to the campground. I am so glad we were able to book a campsite at this state park, because the last time we were here, it was when they reopened right after Hurricane Irma, and the only part that was open was Calusa Beach. Very interesting secluded beach here with all these dead trees. It kind of reminds me of that beach on, on, on Jekyll Island with all the driftwood. But I imagine this might have been killed by Hurricane Irma. I mean, this whole... You can still tell that th there was a natural disaster in this area, even though it's been several years. Uh, yeah, Irma was one of the worst hurricanes ever to, to hit the Florida Keys. So, with a hurricane of that magnitude, the aftermath will last for many years, and the eye of the storm made landfall at Kajoki, just about 10 miles west of here, so everything from there all the way to Marathon was hit by the stronger northeast quadrant of the storm. It was bad. little slice of paradise. Well, I inflated the kayak, so let's navigate the calm waters of Bahia Onda, which in Spanish means deep bay. Oh, 
under the bridge. The newer bridge. Well, with all that exercise, I've worked up an appetite, so let's grill some keto burgers, which means no bun. I'm sure they will still be delicious. I'm using some spices from Michigan that Brian Wood of the Woods Online sent me a while back. I'm also using some Cajun seasoning, give it a little kick. Yeah, I think the next couple of days are gonna be like Groundhog Day, but in a good way. You know, why would we ever do anything else here? You know, this is paradise. Do a little bit of, uh, you know, like snorkeling, a little bit of kayaking, a little bit of biking, a little bit of grilling and uh, by the way, here in late November, it's hot. It's hot in the Florida Keys. Yep, this is how we do it. Let's go walk on the old bridge. Oh, the sun is in our face. Uh, we're going up the, the old Bahia Honda uh, bridge here, which uh, was originally a railroad bridge. It was then converted to, to vehicular traffic. And I think it closed uh, it, it was a little bit dangerous because it was very narrow and very high, so I think it closed, uh, I want to say in the early 70s, but I could be wrong. And they built a brand new bridge on the other side. Here we get a glimpse of Calusa Beach. I 
knew the views were going were to be great. Look at that. And this is as far as we can go. It would be cool if they would let you walk all the way to the edge, but safety first. I can see my kayak, but Minitini is behind that other trailer. Let me tell you, such a prime location. We can see all the way to the Seven Mile Bridge. Just like that, another day comes to an end. almost looks like a western sunset and if you throw a pelican into the mix that's just perfect Another beautiful morning in the Florida Keys. And look who came to visit. It is breakfast time for the Ibis birds. I told you this was gonna be like Groundhog Day, but in a good way. It's a beautiful morning. Let's take out the kayak. It's a little windy and definitely choppier than yesterday, but I think we're gonna be fine. Okay, the idea is uh, to try to go all the way to the broken bridge. We'll see, we'll see how, how the weather handles. Uh, I'll, I'll stay close to shore, just in case. Actually, let's go back to this shallow area closer to the new bridge because we might see something interesting on the water. Yep, I found my floating selfie stick. Let's move a little closer to the bridge. Incredible. It's a whole different world underwater. Next, we're gonna go towards the broken bridge, but first, one more underwater shot.
We're just a little far away from shore for comfort here on this choppy water, but soon we'll reach Calusa Beach. Check it out! Wildlife! Nope, it is not afraid of me. Wildlife. It's getting a little too choppy for comfort, so we're gonna head back. Now going against the wind and the current. It is definitely going to take a little more effort, but it must be done. I'm still really happy I was able to make it all awesome. the way here. What are you still doing here? Shoot. So, I've got this finely sliced ribeye, I'm going to add this frozen seasoning mix, and I would prefer natural, but I've got some frozen mushrooms and some green peppers. I got some Michigan Cherrywood smoked sea salt from Northern Spice Company from Manistee, Michigan. And now we'll add the ribeye, a little bit of black pepper and this seasoning mix called Holy Hamburger. We've got some green onions. Let's get some of those green onions into the mix. We've got at least a five-year supply of smoked paprika, thanks to Mr. CLT. Let's do a little bit of garlic, actually a lot of garlic, and the green onions. Add some Swiss cheese to the mix and the result is a breadless, keto-friendly Philly cheesesteak of sorts. I've been wanting to do this bike ride since, uh, I want to say 2015 or 2016, when we came to Marathon for the first time in an RV and they had just closed the the old seven mile bridge uh, to pedestrian traffic for for renovations but it is now reopened so we're gonna take the e-bike and see if we can go all the way to Pigeon Key so yeah I've been wanting to do this for a while The way that keto friendly boneless Philly cheesesteak was great. And uh, yeah, that came out much better than I expected. I didn't show it to you because we were hungry. In any case, let's take the seven mile bridge back to Marathon and then we'll do that pedestrian bike friendly uh, old section of the bridge. Which, by the way, was used in that movie with. Um, with Arnold, what was the name of that movie? True Lies, I think. They blew up part of the old bridge. That's Sunshine Key once again. That's the Seven Mile Bridge. I'm going to stop right here, right before the Seven Mile Bridge. This is called Veterans Memorial Park. Veterans Memorial Park and it's right here you know on the on the west side of the seven mile bridge 
And uh, the reason I came here, they used to have a, and I guess it was washed out by one of the hurricanes. They used to have the remains of a, of a Cuban raft, you know? And uh, that was always interesting to see and a reminder of, you know, the thousands of people who mm, have lost their, their lives uh, in the Florida Strait. It is a pretty nice white sand beach here, at least by, by Florida Key standards. Of course, the one that I want to go is the one inside the Bahia Honda, which is uh, where we're going after this. Fly, pelicans! Now, who wants to do the entire seven mile bridge in just 30 seconds? Let's do it. As I mentioned the last time I was here, all this was uh, under construction, which uh, was kind of a bummer, but it, I think they have restored it beautif beautifully. And uh, there's a bike path, and uh, let's just check it out first on foot, and then we'll bring out the e-bike and ride it. I think it's like two miles to Pigeon Key. And here they have the historical marker. But this one is for the new bridge, actually. The one built in 1983. And here's the historical marker for the original Seven Mile Bridge, built between 1905 and 1912 as the Overseas Railroad. It looks so tropical here with all these coconut trees. Well, let's go down to the lower level. Here's looking east towards Marathon. Here's looking west towards Pigeon Key. Well, they weren't kidding when they said it was going to be windier today. That's why the, the, the water is a little bit choppy. So, but I think the bike ride is going to be beautiful. It's still partly cloudy, sunny. Hopefully it'll remain this way. If the bridge looks almost brand new, it's because it is. Ilya and I walked this bridge before the renovation and it was in a great state of decay, although it did give it a special character that it no longer has. almost there. In order to visit the Key, you need to purchase a ticket and they have a museum about the history of the island, Henry Flagler and the construction of the Florida East Coast Railway and the Overseas Railroad, I'm assuming because I have never actually been there. This should be an interesting shot with both bridges converging at the vanishing point. Fun fact, some of the guardrails on the old bridges are recycled railroad tracks. Let's find out how much it is to visit the museum these days. looking back towards Marathon. Well, 
Pigeon Key was kind of like the headquarters during the construction of the of the overseas railway, you know, Henry Flagler. And uh, by the way, that key uh, on the other side is called Marathon because uh, according to the workers, this part of the construction felt like a marathon. So um, it is $15 to go down there and uh, they have a tour, a museum and all that kind of good stuff. But um, we're gonna do that some other time. You know, I came by myself, Ili, Ili stayed at the, at the campground. I just wanted to do the bridge. It's been bucket list for a while. And now um, let's go back, get the e-bike and, and, and do the bridge on the other direction on the way back. By the way, they also have another tour on a trolley that looks like a train, kind of like the one they have at Key West. And that one is $25, but you don't have to walk or bike the two miles. I think it would be totally worth the $15 to do it. It's so historic, you know, this was like the base of operations, as I said, for the construction of the railroad during this time. And this was actually the railroad bridge, and it was the bridge, on the, the, the actual bridge, until, was it 1982, when they built the new bridge? But, uh, yeah, all these old bridges were kind of narrow, you know, and, and a little dangerous. One final look at Pigeon Key and the Seven Mile Bridge from here. And we're back! I couldn't leave Bahia Honda without coming to Sandspur Beach. It is actually a little choppier today, but I don't care. As some of you may know, I grew up on a tropical island, so the beach is my happy place. Well, one of my happy places anyways. Once you get past the seaweed, it is actually a great beach. I'm going to say it. This is probably the best beach in the Florida Keys. Fine sand, turquoise waters. It is almost December, so the water is not as warm as we're used to here in Florida, but it is totally doable. After the first impression, it is actually great. Our day is complete. Except for the fact that we haven't gone out to eat anywhere. We must correct that. Let's go somewhere we've never been before. And I have Lou Key Tiki Bar and Grill marked on my map. And as I said, we've never been there before. It says waterfront, so maybe we'll get to see the sunset. We 
it seems very nice actually. Let's check it out. It is early, so we might go eat somewhere else. Somewhere we've actually been before. We don't feel like being too adventurous. We did miss the sunset. Oh well. At least we got to see two good ones, yesterday and the day before. We're going to none other than Sunset Grill, which we can see down there on the right, like a bright neon sign welcoming us to Marathon. We haven't been here in a while. This place has always been good. They have a swimming pool, the food and drinks are good, and had we come a little earlier, we would have enjoyed a beautiful sunset. I don't know about you, but I'm in the mood for a mojito. Cheers. So we got the crab dip to start, some sea bass, and the fried lobster plate. Yum! Well, that was really good. Now back to Bayaunda. Check it out! Fly, Pelican! Well, as the saying goes, all good things come to an end and let me tell you, it is with a very heavy heart <laughs> that we're leaving this idyllic place. We really don't want to go. I mean, I think we're going to wait until, I think checkout is 1 p.m. and that's when we're leaving. But, you know, I'll start picking things up here and there. And uh, today actually we're going to another idyllic place, hopefully. And uh, a little farther down the, the island chain here. Uh, we're going to, to the Sugarloaf Key West KOA, the southernmost KOA, recently renovated. And, uh, of course, we're gonna spend some time in Key West because we're kind of overdue. But Bahia Honda here, Bahia Honda State Park, uh, I'm upgrading it to my top five best campsites ever. Especially this site, Site 17. You're, you have an almost unobstructed uh, access uh, to, to the coast. Some other sites have like rocks and whatnot, but this one is perfect. So yeah, that's the plan. On the next one, we're staying at the southernmost KOA and we're visiting the Conk Republic, also known as Key West. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.